Hey everyone, my name is Greg and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I'm going to share with you my journey of how I built this coffee epoxy table. I'm going to try and give you all the information you need and I'm going to give you tips as we go through the video. I'm going to apologize in advance. As I was recording this video, I've lost some of my footage. And as you can see, we're going to start off by removing all the bark and the soft wood from our slab. This white melamine sheet you see here, it's basically going to be the size for my coffee table. Now, as I was placing my slab on top of the white melamine sheet, I'm basically checking, designing and visualizing how my end product will look. I'm moving the slab around left to right trying to get the perfect design for my client. I know on the video it looks like 10 seconds of designing but this took me a total of about 30 minutes to 1 hour to design this table. So the specific design I was going after was not your traditional river table where you will have your resin in the center of the table. I was looking for something different and unique. And then I came up with this specific design of not cutting the slab right through the center but cutting the slab from corner to corner. I'm placing a steel square tubing as a guide for my circular saw. I know a plunge saw will make the work much easier. I currently haven't got a plunge saw in my possession. I'm busy saving up for one so hopefully in the future you will see me cutting all my slabs with a face tool plunge saw but for now my Makita cutoff saw will have to do the job. The cuts I made I'm placing in position on top of my white melamine sheet. This is the specific design I visualized when I was planning my project. At the same time, I'm going to mark the overhang of my slabs so I can cut my final sizes. Using my Makita cutoff saw, I'm cutting all the edges of my slabs off to its final size. The color we're going to use for this epoxy table is going to be smoky charcoal. So I decided to burn all my inside edges of my live edge table. So when I look at my table from the top, I'm not going to see light live edges. I'm going to see a dark live edge. After I burnt all my edges, I came afterwards to sand everything down. That's just to remove the black dust from your live edge. I'm not going into too much detail of how to build a mold for your epoxy table. I am going to leave a link now of one of my previous tables I built. Please make sure to go and check it out. I am however going to give you a quick rundown. The next tip I want to give you, make sure to build your mold slightly bigger. So afterwards you can come and cut your table to its final size. I'm just using a nail gun to fasten my sides. You honestly can use screws. But I'm finding a nail gun is making my work much faster. And you need to make sure that the sides of your mold is slightly higher than your slab. You need to apply silicone on the inside edges of your mold. This is to prevent the epoxy from leaking out. The next step I want to give you is to make sure that your mold is sitting 100% level. This is to make sure that once you pour your epoxy, it's not going to be thicker on the one side then the other. Now applying a thin layer of wax release agent. This is to make sure that your epoxy is not going to stick to your mold. Make sure you apply it to all the corners and the sides of your mold. Wait about 10 minutes and then you can come and wipe it off. F 
we are officially on the road to 10,000 subscribers. Make sure you support the channel by subscribing, giving this video a thumbs up, and hit the notification button so you don't miss out on any future projects we're posting. We also have very exciting news at DIY with Greg. As we speak, we are busy launching our website where we will have more information on the projects we build and detailed plans for you to download for your DIY projects. I will leave a link in the description where you can find all our social media information and then from there we will announce when our website will go live. Working out the amount of epoxy we're going to use for this project, we need to work out the volume and that's a simple calculation by length times width times height and then we need to convert our volume into kilograms in the near future i will definitely make a video and going into much more detail of how to work out the amount of epoxy you're going to need for your builds adding the color pigment to my resin and this is also one of the next tips i want to share with you the specific epoxy i'm using I can only cast 10 to 15 millimeters at a time, which meaning I'm going to do 3 to 4 pours on my project. And to have the same color consistency on each pour, I'm going to add the color pigment in my main batch of epoxy. You will obviously not have this problem if you're going to do a deep cast epoxy. The reason I'm not using deep casting epoxy because it's 10 times the price of the epoxy I'm currently using. Yes, I lose about one day, but I save much more money. The next tip I want to share with you. If you want to see your end product color, you need to pour about the same thickness you're going to pour on your table into a transparent cup. This will give you a good estimate of your final color. And as you can see, I'm adding a few drops of black this is to make my color a little bit darker. The specific epoxy I'm using is a 1 to 6 ratio. Which meaning for example, if I'm going to pour 1 liter of resin, I need to pour 600 millimeters of hardener. To measure your epoxy accurately while mixing, you need to use a scale. In this video, I'm taking a shortcut by mixing them both together one time. If I can give you some advice, mix your resin and hardener separately and then afterwards you mix everything together. Once I add my hardener and my resin together, I'm going to mix everything for about 3 to 5 minutes. And just giving you another tip, leave your mixture for about 10 minutes and you will see most of the air bubbles will rise up and you can just pop that with a gas flame gun. So for the next 5 seconds I'm going to keep quiet completely. So you can embrace and take in this absolutely beautiful moment. Where I'm going to pour the epoxy in this table. So that being said that's your 5 seconds. And moving on, there's a few tips I need to share with you and something that's a big game changer for me and something I've learned on this project and I'm definitely going to share with you so you don't make the same mistakes. So the first thing I want to share is I see on a lot of social media pages and woodworking uh, epoxy YouTube channels these cross beams I've got across the table is just basically to keep my slabs down. Now, I've seen on a lot of YouTube channels, they are using beams that literally can keep up buildings. It's not necessary to have that bigger beams um, across your table to, just to keep your slabs down. So that's the first thing. The second thing I want to share with you is this is a woodworking shop. So there's obviously a lot of sawdust and you need to make sure that your cross beams are absolutely 100% clean while you're doing your pouring because the slightest movement might cause the sawdust on your beams to fall down that being said in the same breath i also want to share with you um, the buckets i'm using where i'm pouring my epoxy in 
the floor is obviously sometimes also has small dust particles on and you're moving the bucket so many times around the table over the table and there's a big chance for that dust particles to fall inside your epoxy table so you need to make sure that your buckets are also 100 percent clean so after i've done my first pour i waited about 10 to 20 minutes and you will see most of the air bubbles will come up and you can just pop that with a gas flame gun and for this specific project i plan to do three to four pours and according to our suppliers specification we need to wait between four to six hours in between every pour and there's another big tip i want to share with you and something that i've learned on this project so the area i'm from in the world is called south africa pretoria and it's currently winter where we are now it's the month of june and Every time I plan to do a epoxy pour, the day before I make sure everything is in place. So I'll come back in the morning and the shop will be quite cold, meaning the epoxy is cold. And you will see as I'm doing some of the pours, it's the, the epoxy is not that liquidy. It's very, it's a very thick base epoxy. So I need to have heat regulation in my shop which obviously I can't afford now and I'm planning to have a very big drum with warm water and before I'm going to do my pour I'm going to add my epoxy bucket inside this warm water leave it for about half an hour so my epoxy can be more liquidy than a very thick base epoxy meaning that the thick base epoxy makes it very difficult for the bubbles to come up if it makes any sense what i'm trying to explain also another big tip i want to share with you uh, before i'm planning to pour epoxy the day before i will come with a leaf blower and clean my complete shop from top to bottom the walls all the corners and i will do this step uh, about two times during the day to make sure when I'm going to pour my epoxy there will be no dust particles in my shop so once you're done casting your epoxy according to our suppliers you need to wait between three to five days before you can remove your table from the mold And for a second year, I thought I was the Hulk, but obviously this table one, it is quite heavy indeed. So the next tip I want to share with you, once you remove your table from the mold, the top of your table where the epoxy makes a 90 degree angle, that epoxy is extremely sharp and you will definitely cut yourself. So I'm just coming with a file and just running by quickly just to make sure that corners is not that sharp. So to prevent uh, additional three days of sanding, I'm just putting my table on a CNC machine, removing about three mils just to save a ton of time. And now, obviously, if you don't have access to a CNC machine, you can obviously build a router sled and I will leave a link now on one of my previous videos where I built a router sled for the first epoxy table I built. Make sure to go and check it out. After I flatten my top, I'm going to move on to cutting my table to its final size. And I know using a circular saw might be a cheap, fast way, but at this stage, this is the only tool I have by cutting my table to size. A plunge saw will obviously work perfectly but I am busy saving up for one and hopefully in the future you'll see me with a plunge saw. I'm going to start off by sanding my table with a belt sander and 80 grit. This is just basically to remove all the marks the CNC machine made. Another big tip on using a belt sander on epoxy tables when sanding with a belt sander you need to make sure you keep that machine moving don't keep it still at one spot you need to move that machine at all times 
once we are done with the belt sander we're going to move to the orbital sander and i am starting off with a hundred grit sandpaper and then we are moving to a hundred and twenty grit sandpaper once i'm done with a hundred and twenty grit sandpaper i'm going to clean my table and then i'm gonna come afterwards with the airbrush and make sure all the little holes and cracks is 100 percent clean then i'm going to mix a separate small batch of epoxy to fill all my little cracks and holes and you obviously need to repeat this at the bottom of your table also To fasten the steel legs we designed and manufactured to my epoxy table, I'm going to use threaded inserts. I'm using a drill that's slightly smaller with some masking tape to make sure I'm not going to drill too deep in my epoxy table. After I've drilled my holes, I'm coming with a countersink bit to make sure once I'm going to fasten my threaded inserts, it's going to sit flush with my table. Now, I know I'm going to get a ton of comments. Why didn't I add epoxy or some glue while inserting my threaded inserts in my table? And to be honest with you, this is a coffee table and the threaded inserts are going in extremely tight. And I honestly think for this project, Glue or epoxy is not necessary to add this with my threaded inserts. I'm sure you don't want to see me recording myself where I'm sanding this table for two days. So I'm going to give you a quick rundown. After you filled your cracks and holes and the epoxy is dry, I'm coming with a 120 grit sandpaper to remove all the excess epoxy. Then we're going to continue the whole sanding process, obviously starting with the 120 grit, moving on to the 150 grit, 220 grit, 320 grit, 400 grit, 600 grit, and then finishing off with a 800 grit sandpaper. And I'm just adding a small chamfer right around my table to give it a nice, clean, smooth look. Another big tip I want to share with you and something I've learned on this journey is when you sand to your higher grits, like from your 400 uh, going upwards to 1000, 1500, when you're sanding, make sure you don't apply too much pressure to your sanding machine and make sure you clean the bottom of your sanding disc every 10 to 20 seconds with the airbrush that will remove all the swirl marks from your epoxy so for this specific project i decided to try out odis oil it's also one of the best oils on the market in the world and honestly speaking I absolutely loved working with Odis oil. First of all, the first thing I've noticed when I open the bottle, the smell is extremely nice. And I'm going to start off by oiling my table using a product they call Super Duper. It's a product you can apply to your wood and epoxy. Leave it for about 15 minutes and then you come afterwards and wipe it off. And you need to apply the Odis oil using a circular motion. That's the best way for the oil to penetrate the wood. Something I'm also very excited about. I will definitely do a comparison video using Odis oil versus Rubio Monocoat. One of the two oils I absolutely love. So after I applied the Odis Oil Super Duper, I did come back and add another coat of the normal Odis Oil. And I guess you would be wondering why I was doing that. 
and it's quite simple i've done a ton of research on using odie's oil watched a ton of videos and spoken to some local wood suppliers also using the oil and my research has shown that applying super duper penetrates the wood very well and then afterwards coming with a coat of odie's oil leave it for about one to two hours and then come and wipe it off then you will have an exceptionally good finish on your wood before i'm going to leave you with the final product make sure you subscribe to my channel like this video and please leave me a comment below what do you think of this coffee table thanks guys see you next week cheers